Good afternoon and welcome to the Grey's Westminster weekly live stream. Um, thank you all for joining. I've been reading your comments while I've been sitting here. Um, I have newly discovered Peter Gregg live from the Christmas room. What an amazing, amazing guy. Amazing uh, live stream as well. I think I should be watching that later <laughs> if it coordinates with our time zones and differences. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I am Becky Danese. I'm sure that you do already. Um, if you are not a subscriber, please do subscribe. That would be fantastic. If you would, I would very much appreciate it. Um, and if you would like to contribute to the coffee fund, you can also do that by pressing the super chat icon down below. Now, I have a little, because um, some of our contributors don't watch the stream live and they actually then or they or they do but they then contribute using the paypal me link which is also below so if you have done so recently thank you very much i have a little honor roll for you i'm going to do my best to pronounce everyone's names correctly so up to uh the end of last week i'd like to thank leslie grice um ian willard uh thomas i'm going to go with uh was chick that's probably terribly terribly bad but anyway Thomas thank you very much you know who you are uh, Travis Coraher John Mason Simon Theobald uh, Barra H Ian Monroe and Colin Murphy thank you very much all of you for your contributions um, the little Marilyn thing that pops up somewhere over here um, only works when you use the super chat thing so a few people said oh I don't know if I've actually contributed you have and thank you very much um, what happened to the sheep I don't know who the sheep is the sheep the cover. Oh, did we get rid of... No, we used the sheep one. Yes, but they're not here now. Oh, no. I'm d yeah, sorry, they're not in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> no sheep in Pimlico. Um, there was... Some, oh, I haven't seen my email, Sam, but Sam has some exciting ideas, apparently, about merchandise. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, and now we understand the story of why John's wife has to carry all of his equipment. Ah, it's, yes. <laughs> it's not safe for work, that story. <laughs> um, now... Okay, so we're going to talk about hiking, and although the weather is horrendous today, and I would not necessarily recommend going out for a hike on this day, and I'm not going to talk about weather necessarily, but if you are planning to go out on an autumn hike and take advantage of those beautiful turning colours or landscapes, or if you decide, okay, well, we couldn't go away on holiday this summer, so we're going to go for a little excursion in the car, and we're going to go to a national park or a local nature area, whatever it is, um, I wanted to talk to you about gear and what you can take and what you should maybe should consider taking and things like that. Um, no, we don't have the Grey's Mugs on order just yet, Nick, <laughs> but... Give it time, it will happen <laughs> at some point. Um, but yes, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going out on a day when it's super blustery unless you're feeling very brave. We have kind of gale force winds in London, so I don't know what it's like uh, in the further outreaches of England today. Um, but uh, weather and topography aside, because that's probably a different live stream and not one that I'm qualified to give. If we just talk about equipment and what you should take and maybe what you should consider and how you should pack it, um, then then this is the stream for you. So first thing I thought I'd mention is uh, obviously weather and location, but also camera bags. So if you are carrying a huge amount of gear, you don't necessarily want an uneven distribution of weight on your body. Now I, for example, used to carry always a shoulder bag, a messenger style bag, not dissimilar to um, like this one, actually slightly smaller than that. I have a little Billingham, um, but this on its own can be quite heavy. So unless you've got very, very strong shoulders, this may not be the best solution for carrying all your gear around. Obviously it depends also on what you're carrying. If you are, um, is that Southern softy to speak for a mild breeze? Yeah, it probably is. <laughs> We've got gale force winds. <laughs> it's a mild breeze um, up north. So if you are thinking of taking a messenger bag, or if a messenger bag is what you have, just bear in mind that you should probably change shoulder sides as often as possible. Now what I tend to do is I actually have a hand strap on my camera, I don't have one here. Um, I actually don't, we've got the Hawks Mill ones, which are the leather straps, but I use a kind of more all embracing um, camera strap. And I hold the camera in my hand most of the time. Um, I think they're in the cupboard down there. Yeah, there we go. So these are the Hawks Mill 
camera straps. That's not gonna support your hand necessarily, but if you don't want the camera very far, then it will fit pretty much on any camera and it will secure to your wrist like that. So let's say you've got a few lenses in the bag, but you want to keep the camera secured to your wrist and you don't mind it flopping down every so often like that, then a camera strap like that could work. But in terms of bags and what you carry around, I would have a look at backpacks. Um, I've got, a, I've got a surprise bag to show you in a second, which is, is not one that I'd recommend for hiking, but something like this. So this is the Urban Approach 15. This is actually a camera bag that I use. I use this one and also the Urban, no, the Airport Essentials. Um, this holds a tremendous amount of stuff in it. I've actually managed to fit in here a D4S, a D750, a 70 to 200, uh, and a 2470 in this bag. It's actually designed for mirrorless cameras, <laughs> but that's what I carry in it. Um, this one is the Airport Essentials. They're kind of similar sizes, you'll notice. The Airport Essentials is the one that I kind of keep everything in, and then I pick and choose out of it to put into a, a smaller bag. But if you're going um, hiking and you want something that will also double up as something you can put on airport, for when we're allowed to travel again, uh, airport hold size, then the Airport Essentials does fit that. The thing that I like about the um, the Urban Approach is the fact that it's actually got a laptop slot in the back. So it fits um, a 10 inch uh, tablet, but it also fits a 13 and a half inch laptop, which for me is perfect. And it has the little tripod straps and stuff like that. So I would have a look at some backpack rather than a shoulder bag with wide straps. Um, I heard a, a ping, but I was in the middle of talking. Thank you very much, Bill, for your contribution to the coffee fun. Um, you didn't show a camera strap in the beginning photo. Oh, no, it, that's because it was uh, it was taken outdoors. I wasn't in front of sheep when that photo was taken. That's just like skillful Photoshop for you. Um, <laughs> so although I was dressed to see the queen, I was much more likely to see her down the road than I was in the Highlands or wherever the, the background was. Uh, the Peak District it was, there you go. Um, <laughs> so, yes. Uh, Cote Timmy has just bought a D4S so hikes are likely to be very short yeah I am definitely going to be talking about weight of gear um, but I thought you know the the bags is probably the first thing if you're going to take a lot of equipment with you then do look at a bag which has these nice wide straps um, I've also got a couple of backpacks I think that it's it's generally a rule that photographers have more bags, more camera bags than they possibly need. So I have thin strapped camera bags which just fit one camera. They're not very supportive. Don't go on a hike with something like that. But if you do want something for hiking, then a backpack which has those nice big straps. And ideally, if it's got the waist clip as well, then it distributes the weight and it also just makes it more secure. So you end up with a strap around here and then you get straps on either side and the whole thing is supported by your upper body rather than just on one side. I mean, you know, it's it's you can never have too many bags as a photographer as a person <laughs> You can never have too many bags um, Nick has the Billingham backpack uh, for hikes I've actually always wanted to, to try one of those um, and I haven't yet I've got a Billingham shoulder bag, but as I say I have to keep switching sides because it's quite uncomfortable um, If you wear them for a long period of time. Yes to answer your question Michael on the um, on the backpacks These are water treated so they're not waterproof but it does mean that they will repel most water and every single one of the think tank ones and probably the low pro as well they all come with a rain cover so you can just wrap the whole thing up it comes inside um, let me just see if it's in here now that you've asked me let's see if I can find it um, live unboxing for you <laughs> there we go so it comes with a little rain cover like that and it's literally just a it's a bag, essentially, that goes over the entire thing and is waterproof. Now, I will make a mention, now that I've opened that all up, and I'll have to put that away later, with the retrospectives. Um, some of you might have the retrospective series bags, and I know for a fact that the, um, the black fabric is water treat a water repellent whereas the other finishes this one specifically is not as water repellent so you will get this wet which is why it's worth using the um the backpack cover thank you very much travis oh goodness that's that's very kind i just put you on the honor roll and here you go you managed to work out super chat thank you um michael says he's been uh, loves the airport essentials and has been it's been to antarctica with him 
Um, I, for sure, I, I use that bag quite a lot. Although it's a bit boxy for me, um, it actually fits a little bit more in it than the Urban Approach that I have. Um, now, thank you Norm for pointing that out. I would say if you are doing lots of hiking and or you live in the country and you tend to go hiking a lot, then Think Tank's sister company is called Mindshift Gear and they are an outdoor camera bag specialist. So if you, we don't stock them in the shop but we can get them. Um, if you are looking at doing a lot of outdoorsy stuff and you, and they've just created a couple of new additions which have like belt loop um, packs that slot into the backpack like the old Rotation 360 which is an old think tank bag um, so if you are doing outdoorsy stuff have a look at the Mindshift gear bags um, they usually come in different sort of more earthy colours as well like green and um, dark grey and, and stuff like that rather than these which are a little bit more like for city photographers <laughs> I would say personally um, now Roy says he takes no bag and then he has a camera on either side. That is certainly a way to distribute the weight. And I would say if you're going to do something like that, you probably want to look at a decent camera strap. I'm going to talk about camera straps in a little bit. Um, and then right now the second, because I'm going to try and do this in a sequence so don't forget what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm going to talk about gear. So in terms of the weight of gear. Now as you can see on this in front of me here, I don't have big massive cameras. Um, some of you will have big D3, D3, SD4 size bodies, even D5 or D6. Um, some of you will be using smaller bodies. Now, the weight of, for example, the D850, which is one that I talk about quite a lot, the body on its own is a kilo. So it's 1,005 grams, um, and that's without any lenses. Uh, thank you very much, David, for your contribution to the coffee fund. That's very, very kind. Um, I can, but Dennis actually, you know, on just to answer Dennis's question on demonstrating the, the strap, I did a little video. It's very early on on our YouTube channel and um, it's probably easier to show you because the camera is close up on my hands threading it through. So have a little look at that because um, that might be useful for you. Um, Yes, some of the retrospective bags also have the water covers with them. As far as I know, pretty much every think tank bag comes with the waterproof cover. Even the little digital holster style ones, which just fit a body and a lens, um, and have that extendable nose, even those have the water cover with them. So I think, as a rule, think tank includes them with everything. Um, so, now if, you're, if you've already, you know, you're already settled on your gear, you probably know roughly what you'd want to take when you go out for a hike. I'm the kind of person that will take a wide angle and then probably one zoom and I will try and just leave it at that. Now my wide angle is the 20 mil as I think I've mentioned um, a couple of times before. Um, but my travel lens is the 24 to 120 f4, the VR with the gold band, which is not as high spec as the 24 to 70, but it's a pretty decent lens. I've traveled with that a lot. And for the most part, that kind of does everything I want. However, I do find it lacking a little bit at the long end. So for things like that, I would probably take something like a nice and light 70 to 300. I wouldn't necessarily take a lens longer than this. The longer you go, I mean, there's the 80 to 400. I went somewhere, I went to a bird sanctuary and I had to hike up, um, up and down hills for about five miles, which is not that much if you think about it. But I had the D750, the 80 to 400 and the 24120 in my bag. And honestly, I think I needed to see the chiropractor after that. It was so painful. And that was just with the 80 to 400. So um, I may be strong, but not not for carrying that around for, for several hours, for an entire day, pretty much. So, And that was just the 80 to 400. So I would probably go for something like the 70 to 300 these days. Um, just to... Goodness, thank you very much, Adrian, for your contribution to the coffee fund. That's very kind. Um, just, I, everyone's still talking about backpacks and I've moved on to lenses. I'm just going to have a very quick look at your mentions of, um, of bags. Now, so, did I miss someone's comment? Uh, select the gear. Yes, I'm definitely going to talk about selecting your gear, Andy. And one with a built-in rain cover, a couple of bin bags in the pocket. Baxter, I will pick your brain later for locations as well, because you're obviously, I was reading your comments earlier, you've obviously got quite a lot of experience with hiking and photography, so um, I would be interested to, to hear your input for sure. And um, Low Pro, thank you, Terry, it's very kind. Con is at lunch, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going it alone, but it's okay, it's like the good old days. <laughs> 
Um, Lopro, interestingly enough, the think tank bags that we stock, um, we used to stock Lopro back in 2007. For those of you who've been customers long enough, you'll remember that. Um, and, think, and one of the designers from Lopro decided to create their own camera brand bag, bag camera bag brand, <laughs> it's a tongue twister for you, and they um, created Think Tank. And then the spin-off from that was Mindshift Gear. So, you know, they're all kind of in a similar vein, but Lopro have been around for longer for sure, and they're kind of a known, a known bag brand. You will find a lot of designs will cross over with one another. Each one has its own benefits. We don't stock them, but Lopro certainly another, another one you could have a look at. Um, the fantastic thing about Billingham is that they've been around for so long and you can literally get every single part of them mended and repaired if you want to. Um, I would say, I ha as I say, Nick, I haven't tried the backpack version, but the shoulder bag for me for long journeys is just not, it's not very good on my own shoulders. That's, I have a thing with this shoulder, so therefore I don't carry um, heavy things on that side. And that is why I use a hand strap more often than not than a neck strap on my cameras. Um, I saw a few people mentioning earlier about camera straps um, and the Peak Design ones and the Black Rapid. I'll, I'll go over all those as well. So, oh, thank you, Martin. Goodness me. Thank you very much for your contribution to the coffee. It's definitely needed today. It's absolutely freezing and my hands are cold. So if I, hopefully I won't drop any equipment. <laughs> So um, so in terms of weight of gear, as I said, so the D850 is a kilo. Now, hopefully you will understand kilos because I don't, I don't talk in pounds um, and ounces. I just don't, I can't think in those weights. Um, but something like a little, just to explain, the, the lightest DSLR that Nikon do, and in fact, I think it's the lightest, it's because it's lighter than the mirrorless as well, but the lightest that they do is the D3500. This little camera with a battery and a card in it is 415 grams, so it weighs next to nothing, and in my hand it weighs next to nothing as well. Now, if you're going hiking, maybe your intention is to do lots of landscape. You might want to take a super wide angle with you. Uh, the lightest super wide angle is a 10 to 20, which is a DX lens, so obviously when you pop that on one of, one of these, um, it becomes a 15 to 35 millimeter, which is still very wide. It's similar to the kind of FX equivalent of the 16 to 30, uh, 16 to 35, I beg your pardon, F4. And that on its own uh, weighs those two together because the lens is 230 grams and this is 400, so that's four six. So it's 745 grams, 745 grams for that kit if you were just doing wide angle stuff. Thank you very much to whoever that was. Thank you, Brian, for your contribution. Um, so this kit is lighter than the D850 body without any lenses. And I would say that if I were going on a long, if I was going hiking, there is nothing wrong with the quality of DX cameras and lenses at all. They are fantastic. Obviously, if you are going on a specific hike for, let's say, you've got a shot in mind and you're really planning it out and you know that you want to go to this place at this time to take this shot, sunrise, sunset, mist, whatever it is that you're going for, um, then obviously you want the best gear that money can buy. If hiking becomes kind of a second hobby for you and you don't, let's say you tire, literally you tire of carrying heavy gear, then something small and light like that is gonna do the job for, for most shots and you will produce raw files out of this at about almost 20 meg, 15 to 20 meg, um, per raw file, so still plenty of data to play around with. And that 10 to 20 works on all of the modern DX cameras. It doesn't work on the old ones. Um, so if you're not sure whether or not these lenses will work, do just drop us a line or double check the compatibility charts because those little AFP lenses, they have um, <laughs> they have idiosyncrasies as to what cameras they will and won't work with. It will work with, I believe, anything from the D3300 on up. Um, so that's that's a lightweight solution. Or if, like me, you think, well, I kind of want an all-in-one. I want one lens that's going to do everything because I might see some birds. I might want to zoom in, that kind of thing. Then the 18 to 300 compact version, which is again a DX lens. Um, this is 550 grams. So this kit together comes to 960 grams as a whole, and that's pretty much every focal length that you would need in one lens. Um, and that's still lighter than the D850 body on its own. So, so there's some DX solutions for you if you've got a DSLR. 
a lot of photographers that I know actually have one of those smaller DX bodies lurking around. I mean, my kids have one. Um, so, you know, if I really wanted a lightweight camera, I've got a D5100, I think, in the house, which is obviously a fraction of the weight of my D850. Um, the other thing that you could look at, and some of you, I think, have probably already embarked on this, is the, the Z50. Now, the Z50 with its two lenses, so it's got the 16 to 50, the, sorry, yes, it is a 16 to 50. It always throws me that one. Um, and then the 50 to 250. And these two lenses are very, very light and small. So you could probably actually fit that in a in a holster style bag um, or a very small backpack. Those together weigh. I wrote it down and I did the maths. 990 grams. If you want to go up to, because obviously this is a DX lens, so then with the crop it's going to go up to what, like 400 millimeter. 400 and something, someone do the math, 425 millimeters, there we go. Um, so if you do want a zoom, you could go that route. For me, I don't tend to shoot long distance that often, I'm more of a wide angle shooter, so that would be enough to take around with me. And that will fit in a large pocket. As I said, it has to be a large pocket, it won't fit in this pocket. But if you're wearing kind of one of those, um, those Max for hiking, then you could probably fit it in the pocket and then you've got the whole outfit that you want. You could even fit the lens in the other pocket. There you go. Um, hello to William from Illinois. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so Andy has a low pro. Yeah, in Australia, I can understand. It's a very world, it's an American brand, but it's kind of worldwide known. And it carries all kinds of stuff. Um, so AM says he'd use a trolley for all that. That's probably an answer to someone else's question that I've missed earlier. For some of the, Martin tells me, for some of the Billingham bags, you can get a backpack set of straps. Yes, you could as well. When the think tank bags first came out, you could get backpack straps. They probably still make them, but we don't stock the bags now. I don't think that actually require the straps, but that's another way to do it. One thing I do find with those though is they're very thin, the, the backpack strap. So you end up with quite a lot of weight focused on one small area. It's all, all goes back to physics. I knew that I was gonna need my physics lessons from school one day, but basically the, the greater distribution of weight on your body, the easier it is gonna to be to carry it for longer periods of time. Um, so potentially you could do that if you don't wanna buy a whole backpack, I don't blame you, but you could look at getting some backpack straps, just make sure that they're quite wide to carry them around. Um, oh, there we go, yes, Richard sent me some lovely pictures from Austria with the Z, uh, Z50 and the 16 to 50, um, and just for hiking, it's fantastic, I, I would agree with that. It's so light, and it's light even with both lenses. I'm just gonna do the maths here, so, the body is 450, 450 grams, and the lens is 135. So those two together are 585 grams. That's actually almost the same weight. In fact, I think it's a little bit lighter. Yeah, it's lighter than the D3500 and the 10 to 20, or the 18 to 55, which is the standard kit lens for that one. Um, so if you do want a really lightweight camera, that's one way to look. Now, depending on what you kind of do, what what your sort of niche in photography is what you're going hiking for, you might just wanna stick with a mid-range lens. I mean, I have never trusted myself to go hiking with a prime um, or anywhere that I'm not sure. If I'm going somewhere that I can go every week, we have woodland and stuff quite close to where we live. Um, so for that, I will usually just take one lens. It'll either be my 35 or maybe my 55, the old manual focus one. Sometimes I will slip in the old 200 f4, which I've shown you before. It's a manual focus lens, and it's quite nice for just isolating detail when you're out in nature. But if you're not a complete nerd, <laughs> and you don't want to carry on manual focus lenses with you, and I can fit that in the pocket and then carry my D850 in my hand, or f6, or whatever I'm taking. Um, but you might want to take a zoom. Something like a 70 to 200 f4 could be worth having a look at. These are, surprisingly, Similar sizes, as you can see. This one's a little bit heavier. Uh, it's a bit more metal going on here, and optically, the 70 to 200 f/4 is better. It's very close in quality to the old 2.8 lens. But if you don't want a massive 70 to 200 2.8 with you, then the f/4 cuts the weight down by half. The 70 to 300 cuts the weight down by um, two thirds, almost. Uh, so if you are looking for a long telly and you want something lightweight that works with full-frame cameras, then I would say it's one of those two. 
Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend a 200 to 500 for hiking. It is a colossal lens, I actually meant to bring it down, it's upstairs. Um, but anyway, some of you will have seen it. it. I find it too heavy to, to walk around for long periods of time. It's great if you're going to a specific place to sit in a hide or you're going to a particular location where you can kind of stop and put the camera down a lot. But if you're walking, and you're taking shots while you're walking, the 200 to 500 is generally just too cumbersome for that. Um, and when we talk about hiking, I mean, you could just be doing landscape, you could just be doing a bit of everything. That's why I tend to do the, the, the old 24, 120 uh, to cover all the ranges. <laughs> John's wife has to carry her, the 19 mil PCE, the 24 PCE, the 24 to 70, and the 500 PF. Now, John, do you take her hiking with all that equipment because if so maybe you just need to just let leave one of the lenses at home do you need both the 19 and the 24 that seems like they're quite similar to each other anyway um so igor uses the z6 and a couple of voigtlander's vm mounts huh, okay a little heavier than a kilo that's that's a good solution yeah i will mention the z6 Ooh, i've got one is that a z6 yes um, I've got one here. So this is the Z6 with the, the wide angle 14 to 30 on it. The Z6 body is 675 grams. So still lighter than the D850. The, they don't have the 24 to 120 equivalent yet. I'm sure that's going to come at some point. But the 24 to 200 is 570 grams. That's 24 to 200 is that all in one lens. Again, we haven't seen that many of them. But those two together would work out at just about... Uh, 1.25 kilos roughly so it's still lighter than carrying a d850 and uh, an all-in-one equivalent like the 28 to 300 i would say so that's another possible lightweight solution for you i am waiting for for nikon to bring out some more lightweight lenses for the z range the 24 to 70 is fantastic the f4 but then as soon as you go to the 2.8 lenses and i think we talked about this a little bit last week they they become heavy um and if you're going to put an adapter on one of your existing lenses, then you kind of outdo the whole point in buying a nice light camera. So um, so the native lenses that are nice and lightweight really are the primes for this one. And the 14 to 30, if you're a wide angle sort of person. Um, so, so that's weight of camera. In terms of range, I'd say wide angle and a mid range or a mid range and a zoom or like me, an all-in-one kind of 24-120s is close to as an all-in-one as I'm ever going to get, I think. Um, now, Robert, there you go, has a D500 with a 200 to 500. Yes, it is too heavy to hike around with, I quite agree. If I struggled with the 80 to 400, and that's not as heavy, <laughs> then I'm pretty sure it is. Um, Nick points out the 300 PF is a great little lens to take on a walk, for sure. If, you, if you're happy with the sort of the fixed focal length prime idea while you're wandering around then the pf lenses are a very good solution you those sort of die die hard stream watchers will know that i had immense fun with the 500 pf because it's so much lighter than all of the other telephoto lenses um the other solution is the 70 to 300 as i say because that will work with everything andy's yeah exactly andy is saying the z6 is a great option has ibis vr yeah so you can get a good shot no matter what's happening um, now, I wanted to uh, mention tripods a little bit, but my sole tripod is currently being used to film this. <laughs> so I'm still going to talk about them instead. Um, if you are going somewhere where you want to potentially set up a tripod, obviously lightweight is ideal. We uh, are distributors for the three-legged thing tripods, and they do lightweight carbon fiber tripods. I think the lightest one that they do is called the Billy. Um, and the one that we use in the shop is called a Leo, that's also carbon fibre. With some of their tripods, they have a carbon fibre and an aluminium option of each, and you just have to make sure you pick the right one. Carbon fibre tends to be a little bit more expensive, but it's going to be lighter. So if you are going for long journeys or hiking or anything like that, then look at a lightweight carbon fibre tripod. And as minimum fuss on the head as possible because if you start buying you know big video heads or um anything or pano heads and stuff like that they they also add weight to whatever you're carrying around um tom says it's lovely and sunny up in manchester today <laughs> could you send some of that sunshine down this way please tom <laughs> uh so tom use, uses d850s has the low pro runner okay and the pro tactical i don't know either of those bags but they're both 
but both low pro bags. Sam, yep, three-legged thing are awesome. I really do. Oh, there we go. The Cory. I think is that a reasonably new one? The Cory. Um, I haven't seen it in the flesh, but I have. I've got the Billy at home, and we've got the Leo here. Uh, so Terry says he uses the 200-500 with a gimbal. Yeah, I wouldn't say that it's for hiking. Um, Nick mentions Bembo tripods. Excellent. If any of you have recommendations on tripods, feel free to pop them here because, you know, I have the experience that I have. We had, we, I used to have a Manfrotto tripod. I now have three-legged thing. Um, but some of you might have a little bit more experience with different brands. So feel free to add your suggestions. I like Rudolph's setup. Nice and light. D5600. 18 to 140, 10 to 20, um, it is, that's a, a super lightweight landscape lens. Go and have a look at some image samples from the 10 to 20 AFP, it's pretty phenomenal, um, as considering how light it is and how inexpensive it is, but obviously it's a DX lens, so you have to bear that in mind. Right, so that's in terms of weight. Now camera, I've kind of talked about what camera you're going to take. Whatever camera you take, you're going to get good shots if you know what you're doing, so don't worry about that. I think having a zoom lens is helpful if you're not sure what kind of shots you're after. I have gone on whole trips and just taken a 20mm 1.8 with me because I've gone I'm just going to be taking landscape and that's all I'm going to be doing. Um, in some ways it's quite good to curb your <laughs> your lens range and rationalize it a little bit. Um, but otherwise, as I say, for me it's the 24-120. Um, now, the other thing that you could do on the telephoto lenses is you could add a teleconverter. And then, oh, thank you, Gary. Very kind um, contribution to the coffee fund. So, so what you could do with your telephoto lens, like a 70-200, for example, rather than adding another telephoto is you could put a teleconverter on there. They do lose you a, a stop or two depending on which converter you have and you do also lose sometimes a little bit of image quality. Um, I will just show you, thank you, I will just show you, this is a two times, so that's the size of a two times. This is much smaller combined with this making it an f8 lens but that's okay on most bodies that will still autofocus this is much lighter than carrying an 80 to 400 and it's certainly lighter than carrying a 200 to 500 so that that could be a solution potentially um a lot of lenses as i've mentioned before don't take teleconverters this one for example there's nowhere for the converter to go there's nowhere at all it's the the glass is like right there. <laughs> so, so don't put a converter on a lens like that, but you can on a lens which has um, a recessed rear element, so the lens element is inside there, you you can. We did a video three, four weeks ago, um, and one of the things that I talked about was what converters you can use on what lenses. So if you're not sure, go and have a little look at that. Um, some people are talking about trolleys. I will look at the trolley. That's kind of interesting. I don't know how you'd hike with a trolley, but maybe maybe I just am not envisioning it properly. I'm not sure. Yeah, it would be quite difficult, particularly if you rough terrain. So obviously you've got to remember when you're carrying all this stuff and how you're going to carry it. And you're going to need things like spare batteries, for sure. Uh, particularly if you've got a Z camera and you're using the back screen a lot, it will drain your battery quite quickly. So having a spare battery is a really good idea. You probably want to have a spare card in there, um, particularly if it's not a frequent trip for you then, or, or a very high capacity card, but, um, but certainly you want a couple of cards, I would say. Um, we've talked about the tripods, if you're doing landscape work or long exposures, for example. So by the time you've got all that, that's just the camera gear. That doesn't include the fact that you would need to take water and food. And, um, and as Fatini was saying to me earlier, pack as though you're packing for your child going on an excursion. So you would pack lunch and you would pack water and make sure that they have spare plasters and things like that. Socks. And socks in case, you know, they fall in a stream or something. So all those things have to go in your bag as well, um, which I think is why the Mindshift gear bags are so good is because they are designed for that kind of uh, you know, extra bits need to go in the bag sort of thing. Um, so you've got all that additional weight and if you are then also going on rough terrain and you're taking hiking sticks or anything like that, it's all it's all going to add up, right? So just uh, carrying a trolley might be quite difficult. <laughs> anyway, um, but I will have a look at those. Now David says the Peak Design Travel Tripod. That's a good suggestion. I will also have a look at that. That's very, I've, I've seen it on Kickstarter. I actually didn't see the final product, so that's interesting. Um, now in terms of 
rain and rain coverage. Um, I mentioned a few weeks ago the emergency rain cover from Think Tank. This is kind of like a, it's almost like a very posh carrier bag <laughs> with a window <laughs> and that has multiple uses. Um, so you can just shove this into your camera bag. It folds very, very small. Uh, and then if it does rain, you can just pull it over your gear so, so that you can still use your camera while it's raining. Obviously the Think Tank bags, as I said, they, they come with rain covers for their bags, uh, but you wouldn't put this over your camera, it's for your gear bag, right? So this is more if you want to shoot. There's a lovely, lovely picture of a man <laughs> on there taking a picture with the, with the thing on. So something like that could be quite useful. Baxter mentioned a couple of carrier bags. I think that's also a good solution. It's a very easy solution. Um, but might be a little bit difficult to shoot, you know, put the lens through the hole and everything like that. So if you're not really, if you're not really fancying carrying around some carrier bags, then this could be a good solution for you. Uh, Rebecca says she uses a, or would also take a monopod and can use it as a walking pole. Wow, well that's not, that's a good idea, I like that, exactly, that's a very clever solution. Um, and Drazen's thinking, maybe take a phone. <laughs> Just discouraged you from carrying anything hiking. I was going to take my phone and see what happens. I mean, if the light is good, fine, but you can't do beautiful long exposures, you can't put ND filters on a phone. You can't. Um, now... Let's just see. Hiking walks could also apply to city walks. Yes, Mark, I agree. Um, I went to Rome and I walked it solidly for almost 24 hours and um, I carried the 750 with the 24-120 around for that. That was also quite heavy. Uh, that was before I had a D850. Would have been even worse with the D850. Sam is also <laughs> travel mug or water bottle. Are we talking merchandise? Yeah. <laughs> It's amazing, we just come up with new ideas as we're talking. Um, good, so not keen on Manfrotto. Yes, so Arca Swiss plates for sure, I would say. are Arca Swiss, just to explain, it's like a quick release style, almost universal tripod um, fitting. And it just means that, first of all, it's quite, it's very secure, but also you can then, once you've secured it to your tripod, take it on and off very quickly. It's much easier to do than anything else. Thank you very much, Trevor, for your contribution to the coffee fund. Very, very, very much appreciated. Um, Ed says, when cycling, I sometimes wrap a camera and lens into a buff and drop it into small cycling backpack. Okay, so just for weather sealing, putting it in a carrier bag, hotel shower caps work too. Yes, I love these sort of like, you know, home hacks um, for these things. That's excellent. So, and sorry, I missed norms. D7100, 1224, 35, 60, 70 to 300 and folding camp store. Where's your food? <laughs> Don't forget the food. Um, so... Now, let me just talk about straps for a moment because that, a few people were mentioning earlier uh, the Black Rapid style. Black Rapid style is crossbody, it fits to the tripod foot and you kind of just pull it up. In fact, Nikon did a little collaboration with Black Rapid a few years back. Um, for some reason, I don't know why we can't get those anymore, I think they stopped making them, but Black Rapid is one solution and it has a kind of safety loop so even if, you, if the bottom plate falls out, you've still got the camera secured. I personally, although the crossbody strap is an excellent solution for a lot of people, rather than having it hanging down your shoulders like this, I personally use a, a hand strap. As I say, the one that I have isn't here, but this is the Hawks Mill one. This is a little bit more sophisticated than the one that I use, um, in that it's made with leather. <laughs> and it will take a tremendous amount of weight. These straps um, have gone on D850s with 24 to 70s, so there's, or even 70 to 200. So it is very, very strong. Um, I would say if you want something that's a little bit more comfortable then you can get one that actually slips over your hand almost fully and it slips your hand slips over the camera like a glove. Nikon made one. It was called the AH4 camera strap but unfortunately they made it for the D200 series of cameras. Uh, it also fit the D700. Um, it was leather, it had a leather finish on it, so they do last quite a long time. In fact, you know, I've seen them being used for years and they're still in beautiful condition. But because the base plate was specifically designed for the chassis of those older bodies, they don't really fit on cameras um, that we have now. I don't have a D850 here, but they don't fit on cameras with flip out screens basically. So the, the AH4 isn't necessarily the best solution, but something like it, if you're looking for ideas 
to um, to maybe look at a, a hand strap. I've seen some third party ones that aren't leather available on places like Amazon. Um, so so that's another solution for, for the strap. Now, if you're a, a neck strap person, you can always obviously just extend your Nikon neck strap so it's really long and then just wear it cross body. Um, or there was someone at Peak, that's right, Peak Design, they do a sort of quick, uh, quick fire, quick release sort of belt system. I was always slightly scared of putting my camera just on a belt with nothing else and being completely hands-free, like I find that quite scary, but I know a lot of people that use it, so um, Peak Design is another one to certainly have a look at. Unfortunately, we're not a distributor for them, but, um, but you can buy them directly from Peak. Uh, Terry's got a Black Rapid copy, there you go. Uh, and Nigel, yeah, Black Rapid is great for anything longer you attach to lens, not camera. Very good piece of advice, Nigel. If you've got a heavy lens, whether you're attaching it to a camera strap or to a tripod, a lens that's heavier than the than the body, I would say, always mount to the lens. Um, I've said this a bajillion times. Mount it to the lens because the amount of weight that you put, if you've got really heavy lens and you mount it on the camera, the amount of um, pressure that you put on the mount can actually crack it and cause some quite quite permanent damage so um it's it can be repairable but it's expensive to repair so i would just say you know if you're gonna use a strap on a tripod mounting plate or if you're gonna mount onto a tripod with a big heavy lens mount it onto the lens uh spider holster system is more secure than peak design i'm going to look that up because i don't know that one that's a good idea uh, there are, I mean, Think Tank, for example, they do straps, Mindshift Gear do straps. Another one that we can't easily get over here, but I've seen a few places sell them, is Optech USA. They do very thick straps. They used to have an Optech strap. The nice thing about Optech is that they're, um, they're quite stretchy, so you don't kind of have this rigid weight on you. It actually absorbs some of the weight. There you go, neoprene strap. Um, Norm, you and I, you and me, Norm, we're on the same page. <laughs> Andy, uh, spider holster, there you go. So there's a couple of people recommending the spider holster. I will have a little look at the spider holster because I'm quite intrigued. But as I say, I tend to just go hand strap and then it, it holds onto my hand. I've got quite a thick hand strap for my D850 um, and that tends to be what I use. It is a bit annoying if you then need to do things like button up children's coats and stuff like that and your camera's hanging from your arm. It's not ideal, um, but 90% I, of the time that's what I tend to use. So that's <coughs> that's on the strap front. Now, um, I will just mention filters, because obviously, if you are going hiking, you might want to do some long exposures. Um, you also may be in some precipitous weather, which means that a protective filter is not a bad idea. Some people don't use them, and I understand that. Please, if you don't use a uh, filter, just be very careful with the front of your lens, obviously. Um, if you're one of those, like, I put a filter on as soon as I buy the lens kind of thing, because I don't want to get it scratched, then a good quality filter. If you're going, to places where you might encounter bodies of water or great big blue skies, let's say, then a circular polarizer could be useful. If you are maybe doing longer exposures, where th that doesn't necessarily have to mean bodies of water, long exposures you can do with pretty much anything where there's movement um, and then blur out some of the detail. And neutral density filters, as I, I, did, a, I did a live stream like smack bang in the middle of lockdown on the subject of filters and uh, neutral density filters are quite useful if you want to get some extra stops uh, out of there so certainly worth taking that with you now quite a lot of people chiming in on the stra on the straps here so optech um ed says are good yes as i say i used to have one of those i like that mark says black rapid is good for sports photography mm, yeah okay and uh and rebecca agrees with the optech usa for comfort i would say if it's a standard neck strap Optech is the way to go. If you want a crossbody system, which is kind of fr shoot from the hip kind of style, then um, then the old Black Rapid or the third party equivalent or Peak Design are good. Now, Andy, that's a good point. So some people use lens hoods, some people use filters, some people use both. I tend not to use lens hoods, but I do use filters. Uh, other people, yeah, if you're gonna sort of accidentally knock your lens, it's a good idea to have a, a hood on it for sure. Um, but the, I have also seen filters where the filter has taken the main impact and then 
the lens itself is fine, but the filter is not. But the filter is much cheaper to replace than a front element. Uh, so there we go. <laughs> but hoods, I mean, if every, almost every, I won't say every, but almost every lens comes with a hood. Some of these newer lenses, like the little 10 to 20, um, the, uh, the Z50 kits, those don't come with lens hoods. They are an optional extra. I don't know whether that's Nikon keeping the cost down or whether they found that people weren't using them that much. But anyway, so you might not get um, get your hood in the box with the camera and the lens, but you can buy them as, as extras for sure. Baxter, very good point. Do not forget the grads. So graduated filters are basically neutral density in part and then the other part is not. So when you're shooting, let's say very bright skies, and you want to not have to do separate exposures and blend things together, let's say, or you don't want to intentionally underexpose so that you don't lose the highlights in your sky, that kind of thing for landscape. Um, it's most predominantly used in landscape. I'm sure you could use it in another situation. Um, but then neutral density graduated filters, or as they call them, ND grads or grad filters, those are invaluable for, for landscape photography. Uh, case Wolverine case. Uh, yes, I think I pronounced that incorrectly. I think it's German. Uh, ND circular polarizer, but no grads. Oh, that's a shame. Maybe they will. Maybe they will uh, make one at some point. Gobi, we've had some chats with Gobi actually. They're revamping some of their stuff, and we might well end up stocking them at some point in the future because I do very much like the range that they offer um, at the moment. So you can also have a look at Gobi filters. Uh, Nick never takes the lens hoods off, even in the dark. <laughs> Oh, there you go. I think there's different schools on lens hoods. I, my grandfather was always like, why don't you have a lens hood on your lens? <laughs> and uh, I, I never do use one, so there we go. So other things you could look at if you're not going specifically for photography, obviously you could just take a compact camera. If you've got a kind of fancy schmancy phone, my phone's a bit ancient, I probably wouldn't take that on a trip and just purely rely on it. But if you've got a kind of modern super duper camera phone, um, then you could get away with just taking that, uh, as Drazen said, maybe he's got an iPhone XR, or whatever the current one is. Uh, other things you could look at is something like a GoPro, the quality is not going to be anything like your, your Nikon cameras, but if it's just to capture the journey, then obviously that's a nice solution for sure, um, because you don't, it doesn't weigh anything really. It's like kind of thing you could slip in your pocket or attach to a hat or a helmet, um, or you know, with one of those little bands, um, and they tend to be waterproof and things like that as well. So you don't generally need to worry about rain covers. So it does depend on what you're planning to go for. I, for one, would probably not go on a hike without taking a camera with me of some description. Um, I had a chat with someone the other day who uh, used <laughs> uses medium format and large format cameras and uh, taking those on a hike would be just <laughs> not impossible, but definitely that's a bodybuilding. I mean, you don't need to go to the gym. That's bodybuilding exercise in itself. Um, so it, depending on what what kind of thing you're going for. It'd be lovely to take a medium format camera. I'd love to take my Pentax 6-7 on a hike up a mountain somewhere, but I can't foresee myself carrying it for any length of time. Uh, Drazen says many hikers uh, pro, yeah, hang on, like pro hikers, taking bridge with extreme zooms. So bridge cameras, like I suppose mirrorless. I would call this a bridge camera. GoPro on a helmet is cool, yeah. Um, and I think, you know, if you're not going for the perfect shot and that's not the intention of your trip if you're the intention of your trip is to go for a walk and the photography is very much a secondary thing then you can absolutely look at things like gopros and, and stuff um <laughs> john's gonna get the wife to take his hat off that <laughs> oh dear <laughs> yeah see i couldn't carry anything like that i'd be forget it my husband's not willing to carry those for me so i'm gonna go with something small and light like a z50 um now a couple of little obvious things. Obviously have really good shoes if you're gonna go hiking. Wear, wear clothes that are suitable for the terrain. If you know you're gonna go somewhere where there's lots of water, for example, or you're gonna be crossing streams, spare pair of socks, that kind of thing is always useful. Um, best medium format camera for hiking is the Mamiya 7. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. I'll be sure to remember that. Uh, Norm says don't rely on a smartphone camera. It's worth hiking to take photos, take a real camera. Yeah, I, I agree, I think. For me, I would certainly take a proper camera rather than take a smartphone and rely on it. I've never, I've never used my phone as a, as a 
you know, photography camera. It's kind of like, I was here sort of thing, as opposed to, I want to go and take a beautiful landscape picture. I'm going to take real, real equipment, if I can call that. Um, now, other, I suppose, obvious things is tell someone where you're going. So if you're going alone um, or you're going somewhere where there's probably not going to be any signal, always just let people know that you're going to be off the grid because if, heaven forbid, something were to befall you, it's always good that someone knows that you've gone and then can, um, you know, help out if, if something happens or if you get lost or anything like that. So... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Uh, my husband has many merits. Carrying my equipment is not one of them. <laughs> I think that's a bit extreme. Could put sh saddlebags on the sheep, that's for sure. Little pannier bags. <laughs> uh, Terry took out the little Diana Lomography film camera, all plastic, no weight, no batteries. Yeah, these, you know, sometimes just the fun of taking pictures. I have something to mention on that. I will not forget that I must talk about um, film in a moment. Remind me someone. Um, so apart from telling someone where you're going, I have one final piece of advice for today's stream before I lose my voice here, which I undoubtedly will. So someone was saying to me that uh, when you go for a hike, you kind of tend to look forwards most of the time. I tend to look forwards and up and around, but what I very rarely do is look backwards. And sometimes the perfect shot is actually behind you. The perfect photo opportunity is behind you. So as you walk, obviously making sure that you're in a safe place, do, do take the occasional look back because you never know the shot that is kind of like the shot of the afternoon or the day could have been behind you rather than in front of you. So there's a nice little extra, extra bit of advice. <laughs> it's lots of advice for uh, John's wife here. Uh, so, film. Right, before I forget, so some of you who are regulars or who um, who get our newsletter will have seen that Analog Wonderland, yay, Analog Wonderland are doing a film subscription box and I only mention them because I love them to pieces and I think that they are, they're another kind of small company, uh, UK based and they deserve everyone's support. So if you are kind of interested in experimenting with different types of film and you're not sure what film to buy or you haven't fallen in love with a particular type of film, for example, then what Analog Wonderland do is a buy, it's a bi-monthly subscription. You get a box every month, but you basically pay for two months worth. So for, I think it's £50, you get two months worth of film. Um, and then they have a selection of different films in there. I think with the first kit, there's also free developing of one of your films with Digital Lab, which is another another developing company. Um, and if you use, and we will put the code below, but it's grays-w for Wonderland, box five, you will get five pounds off um, as a kind of like early bird offer. So if you do want to try lots of different films, they've got some wonderful film selections, but if you do want to try um, different types of films, go and check that out on the Analog Wonderland website. That is where I get all my film for, uh, from. And as Martin says, Analog Wonderland are great. They've got they've got plenty of film on offer. They've got also kind of other bits and pieces um, as well, developing kits and things like that. And, uh, and they usually have a special edition sticker in each of their packages. And they're just a bunch of really nice people that love photography. So if you are interested in doing that, then head over to the AW website and use the Grays hyphen W box five that will give you five pounds off your first uh, wonder box, <laughs> is the word. It's uh, got a really cool name, wonder box. So there we go. Uh, hi from Port Elizabeth, South Africa. Gitzo tripod and Z7 are indispensable on hikes. There you go. So you, now you're, I'm going to get all your all your suggestions here of things that you can take. I picked the lightest things: the Z50, the 3500, Z6, Z7. I would say those are the lightest. I have carried my D850 traveling with me before, but generally I try and stick with the lighter bodies wherever possible. Hopefully that has been useful for you today. Um, I don't know what the weather's gonna be like in your area this weekend, but if uh, it's inspired you to maybe go out and take your gear, please do upload any photo results you wanna share to our drive folder because we've actually still got the drive folder up and running and it would be lovely, as some of you are still uploading pictures and thank you very much for that. But if you haven't checked in recently, go and have a little look on the Grey's uh, photo drive folder and if you decide to go out hiking and maybe take some landscapey shots and you wanna put what gear you took with you or you wanna share locations that you think other people should check out, then please do upload into the drive folder. Um, 
Exactly, Rudolph. Don't forget to stop walking uh, when looking around. <laughs> it's a good. It's like you start walking and then yeah, it's a very good piece of advice. Um, Nick Can has the ordnance survey maps on his phone plus real. There you go. So you've got real maps and emergency numbers and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Everyone needs to stay safe when they're doing that. Um, right. I'm looking forward to seeing your photos next week from all your hiking. Um, if you have any questions for me throughout the week, obviously you can always leave a comment below if you have suggestions for other videos and things like that. Um, and otherwise, I wish you a wonderful, safe weekend and rest of your week. Thank you very much, everybody who contributed to the Coffee Fund. I think I got you all, but thank you very much for all of those contributions and to anyone else who's contributed on PayPal. I will try and make the, uh, the honor roll a weekly thing. Uh, wherever possible. So there we go. You're welcome. You're welcome everybody. Thank you for joining me. I will see you next week. Bye